Welcome to the third in our Tirana series. In the first video we flashed the firmware onto this great little radio. In the second video in the series we talked about the differences between the Tyrannus radio and how you set it up when compared to a more traditional radio and then set up our first model with just four channels. The throttle, rudder, elevator and aileron. In this video we're going to carry on and build on that second video so if you haven't watched that second video I strongly recommend you go back and have a look at it because this time we're actually going to add additional channels onto a basic four channel model that Wizard creates so that we can fly a multicopter. So in this video what we're going to do is we're going to connect our D4R2 receiver to a CC3D flight controller and we're going to configure it all so that we have another two channels on top of the four that are there by default. One can control the flight modes to give us different ways that the CC3D will fly our multicopter and I'll probably set up another one as well that we can use for something else. I'll probably use the momentary touch switch in the top right hand corner so that we can do things like maybe attack a lost model alarm. Now the video where I actually do connect the lost model alarm using a PPM receiver I'll link to in the description if you're interested but this video is really going to concentrate on the setup for the radio how we add those additional two channels and configure it all on here. So the first thing we're going to need to talk about really is the fact that even though we're going to set this up for a multi-rotor, the process we're going to go through to add and configure the two additional channels is exactly the same if we're adding channels to a multi-rotor or to a glider, a plane, whatever it is that we're putting together. So this is simply a great way for us to show how you can configure all this up. So we'll put this together, we'll add the two channels, channels 5 and 6 on top of the four that are there already. Then we'll connect it to the CC3D and we'll configure it and I'll show you how all that works. Then we'll do a little bit of end point adjustment so that uh, the numbers look right on the screen and also show you how to do things like adjust direction too. Because although the CC3D in the software will let you do that, it's also worthwhile while we're in here showing how we do it through the menus. And finally, I'll just show you how all the sticks work and we should be good. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll zoom in a little bit and I'll just explain how we've connected the D4R2 to the flight controller using PPM. So as you can see, we only have one set of three cables that are connecting the CC3D flight controller to the D4R2. And that's this one here that's plugged into channel one. Now the way we're telling this little receiver that we want it to output PPM, i.e. all of the channels on one set of wires, is by putting this little jumper across the signal ports of three and four. If that's there, then the output of channel one becomes the PPM output, the output on channel two then outputs our SSI. So this is a very simple way of how we're going to plug it together. Once we've done this of course, we bind it in the same way we did in video two. So now we have this configured, we can actually go back to the radio and have a look specifically how the model is created and look at creating the extra two channels that we think we're going to need to manage this flight controller. So let's go on to the Tyrannus radio. So here's the model that I've set up that we're actually going to use to play with the CC3D. Uh, named it CC3D demo. I've also put a cute little CC3D image at the bottom. But we're actually going to go through and we're going to create a new model on the radio just to show you what the wizard on the current version of the firmware will leave you with when you use it to set you up with a multi-rotor. So we're going to go into menu, we're going to go down and select an empty spot. We're going to press and hold enter and we're going to say create model. This is very similar to what we did in the previous video. And again, we get our four choices. This time though, we're going to select the multi-rotor and we're going to hit enter. And it's going to ask us where we want the throttle. And again, we can change the channel. So we'll say that's fine. We'll keep it on channel one. It'll ask us where we want the roll. Channel two works. Where we want the pitch, channel three works where we want the your channel, which is channel four. Press it again, and it'll say enter to confirm. Now you'll notice that it's only actually going to configure four channels, the standard four that we would expect, but it hasn't asked me to assign a mode switch. Now I'm sure this will change in future versions. So if you're watching this and trying it, and it allows you to add 
the extra mode switch and auxiliary setups then that's great but as we are right now this is how it works so we'll click long enter to confirm here we go model 03 if I just jump into the pages for model 03 you'll notice that exactly as we looked at last time we have four inputs set the inputs match the controls so we have throttle aileron elevator and rudder and if we go and look at the outputs then the channels one two three four are then assigned to the throttle aileron elevator rudder inputs that we did in the previous step but most multi-rotors need at least five and sometimes six channels active to be able to control how it flies. First of all, let's set this up. So we're going to come back out of this, just exit, go back into model. We'll actually select the CC3D, press and hold and select model. There we go. So what we're going to do now, we're back on our CC3D model, is we're actually going to set up these additional two switches first one we're going to select is the three position switch. There are a lot of three position switches on the Tyrannus radio so you just pick the one that works for you. The one that I particularly like is this one in the top left hand corner which is switch E. So I'm going to set that one up. So what we're going to do is page down until we get to the bit that says inputs and we're going to scroll down to the fifth input that's unconfigured and press enter. Now the input name we're going to call it something useful like uh, modes. So let's do that. We'll hit enter. Again, capital letters, press and hold enter. Now, what we'll do then is we'll go down and then we need to select the source. Now, the source is what control is actually going to do it. Now we can either hit enter and then we can scroll through all of them one by one or the cool thing is when you're doing it on the radio you can actually just flick the switch you're interested in. So there we are, it's automatically picked up SE. So we're going to click enter for that. And now if we come out of this part of the radio you can see that we have a new mode that's connected to SE. So the next thing we need to do then is we need to then select a mix so that that control is output on a channel. I would say that it makes sense to output that on channel 5. So we'll go down to channel 5, press and hold enter. Again, we'll give it a source name. Let's call this something like F mode. And it's automatically going to select the source that we looked at that's last been added but if we want to change that we can actually hit enter and we can change the rudder the throttle elevator whatever it is already so we're going to keep it on the mode that we set up before now if we exit again and exit one more time we now see that the mixer on channel 5 is mode now we can just confirm that that's all working if we exit out of here and hit the page a couple of times so that we get the channel monitor as I move my little three position switch in the corner, you can now see channel five is flicking from minus 100 to plus 100. So we know that's working and that's great, fantastic. So we're going to click menu again. We're going to go down to the inputs because we want to do one more. We'll press and hold on input six to have a new input. We'll input name, we'll call it something like buzzer. And we will select the source. So again, we're going to select the source. We're gonna put the flashing cursor on it and we're just gonna flick the switch we're interested in. There it is, it's selected SH, which is what we're after. So we'll hit enter for that and we'll exit out and now we can see that we have another input set up which is called buzz which is the sh switch and again we have to now connect that to an output so we have it on a channel we're going to go down we'll stick this on channel six the next one it makes sense we're going to call the mix name something like um l mod for loss model And again, 
it's automatically picked up the buzzer input that we set up before, but we could actually select that and change that to whatever we want. But we'll still keep it on buzzer because that's what we're after. We'll keep the weight as 100% and everything else as default. So again, if we exit out, go back to our very first screen, click page to get the channel monitor, we can now see that channel six is at minus 100. As I touch that momentary switch, it goes to plus 100. So now we have a radio that looks like we might be in business. So I would say that we probably need to connect this up to the CC3D and check that all of these inputs that we've selected for our six controls and these outputs are going to work. So let me just quickly go on to the computer and connect everything up and we'll have a play. So here we are in OpenPilot, and this is the configuration software for a CC3D, but it's a nice graphical way for us to go through the setup for the radio and show you everything that we've done. So again, we've just configured this switch here to be the switch that's going to do our three positions for flight modes, and we have a little momentary one down here that we could do for something like a buzzer later on. So we have the board connected, it's all powered up, the receiver's connected, we're getting telemetry. So what we'll do is we'll go into the inputs, click on Start Transmitter Setup Wizard. And we're going to click Next. Now the first thing it's going to do is ask us whether we're set up for Acro or Helicopter. It's Acro, we haven't got any of the heli settings done in the radio, so there's nothing wacky like swash mixes, so we'll keep with Acro. Click Next and we're a mode to radio, so we don't have to worry about that. Next thing it does, it says move each control one at a time according to the instructions. So we'll move the throttle, then it asks us to move the aileron, then it asks us to move the elevator, and then it asks us to move the rudder. Next, it'll ask us to move the flight mode switch, which is the one we've set up over here. And now it'll ask us for accessory zero, which is the toggle switch at the back. It's going to ask us for accessory one. We're going to just skip that because we, we haven't set those channels up. Finally, we're going to put all the sticks to their middle position, include the flight mode switch, and we're going to click next. And then it's going to ask us for us to move everything to their maximum position. So we're just going to go to all the corners. And for those of you that have watched the CC3D series, this will all seem very simple. Okay, we're going to click next. Now it's going to ask us to check that the controls on the screen work the same as actually physically on the radio. So we'll move the elevator first. That's fine, that's moving the right way. We'll move rudder next, that's good too. We'll move aileron, that's working great. And then we'll move elevator. Now, elevator is backwards. Now, two ways we could fix it. We could fix it in the software by just reversing the pitch, but actually we'll change it in the radio. Now, to actually change the direction of travel of a channel on the radio, you can do it in lots of different places. But as we're at the start of the series, we'll do it in the most simple. So we're going to go into menu again. We're going to scroll down until we get to the servo screen. Now the servo screen, if you remember, we are looking for the channel that controls the pitch, which is the elevator. So if we're not sure, we can just press and hold page. That takes us back up one. And the ele elevator is channel three. So if we go down and select channel three, as we go across and select everything, you can see there's a name for the channel, which we could put the name of the channel on there if we had a lot, it helps keep track of everything. Then we have the sub trim. So on a normal radio, you'd have a sub trim menu. This is where it's hidden away on the Tyrannus. Then we have the minimum and maximum ranges. So these are your end points. You can think of it like that. And then finally, we have a direction. I'm going to hit enter. And now that direction is reversed and we can confirm that if we move the elevator, it's now right with the elevator on the screen. That looks good to me. So we can come out of that on the radio and then we're going to click next on the setup. And now it's saying just double check that everything works. So now as we move the sticks, we should see them move perfectly on the screen, which they do. And there 
is everything working great if I move the mode switch there it is if I move the accessory zero switch we can see that changed too okay so we'll click next again so on the CC3D, it all uh, defaults to always disarmed with the latest version. I always like to, to arm it, hold the stick to the bottom right hand corner, which is your right. And we'll click save. Now, if we go back into the inputs, here are all the values and you can see here that as I move things around, they're changing in the display. I would say that my throttle values are a little bit too much. It's going down past 991 and up past 1032. I would say that's too much. So if we go back into the servos menu, you can see for channel one, the low end value is actually 988 microseconds. So it's actually reading it slightly higher on the CC3D software, but that's too much. I'd like that about 1060. So I'm going to select enter. I'm going to go come across here until I get to the minimum. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to change that number. And as I'm clicking the minimum endpoint, you'll see the actual value changing. So I'm going to change that till it's about 1060. work for me and I'm also going to change it so the maximum value which at the moment is 2011 I'm actually going to reduce that so it's down to about 1890 on well no 1960 is probably better because that's about this where the Simon K throttle is on the ESCs anyway okay so now the channel will actually go to 1960 at the top end and it will go to 1060 at the bottom end. That's more like a normal channel range to me. So if I redid the calibration or what I could do here, and now you can see it's actually, as I move the throttle, it isn't going right to the end of each side and that's because it's a more standard throttle range. So all I'm gonna do is just change the numbers here to match what I've got on the screen. So that's about 1058. And on the other side, I'm going to set the maximum to about 1960. There we go, that should just match up. So just be careful of that when you're configuring everything. So now, as you can see, it's actually the throttle is going to the endpoints again, give me full throttle range, and it's not going to, if I was plugging this directly into an ESC, confuse an ESC by going way outside of the normal throttle range that it would expect to see. So, set up, we're ready. Now we can unplug this from our controller, and then we can go out into the field and have our first test flight. So hopefully that helps you understand how we can do things like actually configure and set up additional channels, how you can run through something like the configuration on the CC3D, and then how you can use things like channel reversing and the endpoints in the servo menu to adjust how far each channel actually moves. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more videos in the series, and happy flying.